Hello again, and thanks for clicking that button. You see, I told you it'd make sense. As you already know, I'm Eurogamer's Ian Higton, and if you're anything like me, you'll have seen trailers for Deathloop and thought to yourself, wow, that looks cool. Kind of like Austin Powers meets Returnal in the Dishonored universe. But also maybe, this kind of looks confusing. What the hell is even going on here? Well, I was invited to check out a hands-off presentation of the game, which showed me a huge chunk of gameplay. So, in an effort to help get across what exactly Deathloop is all about and how it plays, what follows are a list of 15 things you need to know about the game that will make it way easier to understand how Deathloop works and what your goals actually are. But before we get deep into the gameplay, let's kick this list off with something that you lot definitely won't know about, because this hasn't been shown anywhere else before today. And that's the fact that there seems to be an abundance of Easter eggs in Deathloop surrounding other games in Bethesda's back catalogue. During the presentation, we were given a lingering look at an arcade cabinet for a game called Super Honorless 2, which, if you haven't already guessed from the vector graphics here of the Outsider's timepiece and the folding blade, is a nod to Dishonored 2. But that's not the only arcade cabinet in the game to hold secrets for Bethesda fans. In this shot, taken from some of the brand new gameplay that we were given, we can see the first game in the Honorless series, which has a plague-ridden rat running across its title screen. So that's a nod to the first Dishonored there. And here there's a game called Sky Daggers 5, which is a mashup of The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim and The Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. Then in this shot of a big video game arcade, we can see on the left Bludenstein 4D, a cheeky wink to Wolfenstein 3D, and then Touch of the Stranger, another nod to the Dishonored series and specifically the character The Outsider, whose ability bestowing brand, The Outsider's Mark, is clearly shown on screen just below the title. Bethesda games pretty much always have easter eggs referencing other titles from the studio hidden inside them, but could the abundance of Dishonored easter eggs here mean that both Deathloop and Dishonored take place in the same universe? Considering the similarities in some of the supernatural abilities that the main characters in both games wield, the potential for a shared world is definitely there, so I'll be keeping both eyes peeled for more references once the game is out. My money, though, is on at least one reference to Dunwall being hidden in there somewhere. Okay, next up, let's chat a little bit about the two main characters. We already know that Colt is the protagonist and that his nemesis, the assassin Juliana Blake, is out to kill him in as many ways as possible. But why exactly is that? Why does Juliana want Colt dead? And how does all of this tie in with the main aim of Deathloop, which is to kill eight targets before the day ends to break this mysterious loop? Well, the bulk of this question forms the main narrative of the game, so we probably won't know the real reasons for most of these things until the ending cutscene rolls, but the presentation we watched definitely filled in a few of the blanks, although to be honest with you, this only created more questions in my mind. For instance, there were multiple remarks made by Colt in his voiceover that seemed to suggest that once upon a time, he and Juliana were romantically involved. Was Colt once part of the same organisation that Julia works for on Black Reef? Did Colt turn traitor and in turn break Juliana's heart? Perhaps Juliana is secretly on Colt's side and they're working together to overthrow the Aeon programme, but to do this she has to kill him over and over again in order to help him finally realise his goal of breaking the loop. So then the next big question you probably have is, what even is this time loop anyway? What caused it and what's its actual purpose? Well again, there was nothing concrete in the presentation to answer any of those questions, but there were a few hints. So the main antagonistic organisation in Deathloop is called the Aeon Programme, and as cult, we have to kill the eight visionaries who not only run the programme, but who are also ultimately responsible for the endless loop that cult is trapped in. 
These visionaries are basically the boss characters, and in order to beat the game, you'll have to work out how to create loopholes in their schedules so that they end up in places where you can easily kill all eight of them in one whole loop. How they have created the loop and what the loop is ultimately for is something I expect Colt will need to find out during the course of the game. But whatever it is and whatever it's for, it's the visionaries who were the cause and as long as at least one of them remains alive, that time loop can be maintained and then reset. The other enemy type you'll encounter during your time on Black Reef are known as the Eternalists. They're the ones you'll see being slaughtered by Colt throughout this gameplay footage, and they make up the bulk of the enemy forces in the game. The Eternalists have been recruited by the Visionaries to further their goals of immortality, but it's not 100% clear what the Eternalists are getting out of this arrangement yet, other than the chance to be perpetual meat shields for their masters. So I've mentioned Black Reef a couple of times now, and as you can probably guess, this is the setting for all of the events in Deathloop. But what exactly is Black Reef? Well, in the presentation, we learned that Black Reef is a remote northern European island that has been shaped by harsh natural conditions. On it lie concrete bunkers, retro sci-fi structures, and lush pop art inspired streets and interiors that come together to create a twisted version of the 1960s aesthetic. Black Reef is made up of four different districts, and these are called The Complex, which is a snowy location with many concrete structures, Updam, a dishonoured style town with tight streets and big stone buildings with lots of industrial themed interiors. There's Fristad Rock, a coastal district built into the rocks and caves around the shoreline. And then finally there's Carl's Bay, a large residential area built on a cliff edge. Each of these four districts is home to two visionaries, and when you're choosing which district you want to visit, you'll also be able to choose what time of day your visit happens in. So that's either morning, noon, afternoon, or evening. You'll need to gather intel across many loops in multiple combinations of time and location in order to work out how best to get your targets in the right place at the right time in order to complete your mission. As you might expect, death plays a huge part in Deathloop, but exactly how that works has been a little bit confusing up until now. In the presentation, we were shown the very start of the game, and in it, Colt wakes up on a beach with no memory of how he got there. As he explores, the narrative unfolds in three different ways, via Colt's internal monologue by way of some really fun voice acting, through mysterious floating messages that appear to be communicating with Colt somehow, and finally through radio conversations with Juliana, who for some reason is in contact with Colt all the way through this first section of the game, even though she's trying to kill him. At one point, we even overhear Juliana on a loudspeaker warning the Eternals that Colt is trying to break the loop and his vow to the Aeon program, so this does add weight to the theory that Colt's defecting for some reason. After this introductory chapter, every clue you gather, like for instance door codes, will stay with you between days. This means that slowly, one death at a time, you'll be able to open shortcuts and new routes towards your goal of taking down the visionaries. So now we understand the characters and their motivations, but what about how the game actually works? Well, there are two main ways to play Deathloop, and once you've completed the introductory chapter, you can choose from one of two options whenever you play the game. You can either choose to break the cycle or protect the cycle. Protecting the cycle is basically an invasion type multiplayer mode, and it's based on a mechanic lifted from an unreleased arcane game called The Crossing, which was cancelled in 2009. In this mode, you'll play as Juliana, and you'll jump into other players' games and attempt to kill them before they, as Colt, can take out the visionaries. This invasion mode sounds pretty awesome, but currently we don't really know what benefits there are for the players doing this. Will you earn upgrades for Juliana? Maybe some extra bits of story detail? 
Honestly, we don't know yet, but hopefully there's something in there to motivate us in our quest to hunt down all the instances of cult we can find, other than, you know, just being a troll and ruining people's days. Although, to be fair, that does sound kind of cool in a cruel kind of way. The other main way you can play this game is of course as Colt himself. This is the main story mode and I think the best way to picture it is kind of like a roguelike. The more you play and the more you die the more you'll learn until you become a master of your surroundings. And that's where the next few points come in. Customizing Colt is going to be a big part of the game and you can tailor his skills to your playstyle in a variety of ways. First up, there are things called trinkets, which are upgrades for both your weapons and for Colt himself, and you can mix and match these in order to give Colt the skills he needs to succeed. A few examples of weapon trinkets we saw in the presentation were Shock Absorber, which reduces recoil, Straight Shoot, which increases accuracy, Hipster, which reduces spread from hip fire movement, and Mind Leech, which interestingly causes your enemies to suffer not only damage but power loss when hit as well. So that one should be good for going up against visionaries or perhaps defending yourself from Juliana. These trinkets come in three distinct rarities, white being the least powerful, blue being mid-range, and purple being epic. In terms of trinkets that enhance Colt's physical attributes, we didn't see any of those in action, but we were told they offer upgrades like double jump or a reduction in incoming damage. Just like other roguelike style games, once Colt dies, he'll lose all of the trinkets he earned in his run and he'll start fresh on his next one. Except that is, if he finds something called Residium. This is a rare and mysterious resource that is hidden around Black Reef, and if found, it can be used by players to unlock their favourite gear and powers permanently for every single future run, which is nice. Oh, and on the subject of powers, you can gain these by finding things called slabs. These slabs sit on Colt's arm and bestow upon him supernatural powers. These are things like Shift, which is basically Dishonored's blink power, which lets you teleport short distances. There's Aether, which renders Colt invisible to the Eternalist's security lasers and, more importantly, the Visionaries. Havoc allows you to absorb incoming damage and unleash it in a brutal blast of destructive powers. And Carnesis lets players throw enemies around in any way they choose. One really cool one that I saw though was called Nexus, and this one ties enemies together using some kind of psychic link so that they all share the same fate. So for instance, cast Nexus in a group of four enemies, then headshot one of them, and all four will go down at the same time. Talk about resource management. Do you like loadouts? I hope so, because in Deathloop you can also customise your weapon loadouts. There's a nice selection of weapons available, ranging from handguns, SMGs, machine guns, rifles and shotguns, right through to a super cool silenced nail gun. In the presentation we saw that each weapon type has a variety of skins, plus a certain amount of trinket slots in each, so that you can customise different weapons with different trinkets. Basic weapons have only one trinket slot, but higher tier weapons allow you to have access to a maximum of three trinket slots per gun. Like going loud? Prefer to play stealthy? There are many ways to play Deathloop, but quite a few confrontations that I watched in the presentation felt almost Far Cry Outpost in nature. Colt starts by surveying the area, then he slowly takes out the Eternalists one by one without raising an alarm. This can be done via close quarters stealth takedowns or using Colt's botch together scanner to create distractions, for instance making a telephone ring so that one enemy breaks from the pack in order to investigate it. One of the things I'm sure you've spotted from all this new gameplay I've been showing is just how stylish Deathloop looks. Everything in the game is presented in such a beautiful, bold way, and it leans into that 60s aesthetic hard. It's just all a little extra. 
from the snappy way the guns are reloaded through to the vehicle and level designs. It's all just so detailed and colourful and unique. One of the coolest things though, to me at least, is the character design for the Eternalists. Each one seems super funky, with awesome costume and makeup combinations. From the small snippets I saw, it seems like Deathloop has ditched the copy and paste enemy types that you see in most other games and given each of our opponents a unique look. This next point is for all you gorehounds out there, because, as you can see from this little montage here, there's a lot of decapitation in Deathloop and stabbing, and just straight up rather brutal kills to be honest with you. Perhaps this is because Colt knows that his victims will come back the next day, so he just doesn't care about all the damage he does. Either way, once you've dispatched an Eternalist, their bodies will fade away into nothingness, so even the goriest of kills gets cleaned up pretty quickly. Out here, Out here we're trapped. We're free in this endless, eternal cycle. And finally, I just want to give a big shout out to the voice acting in Deathloop. Bizarrely, the new gameplay we were given came with absolutely no audio, so there's not much I can show you that you probably haven't already seen in trailers. But let me tell you now that the voice acting from Colt, Juliana and all the characters is phenomenal and full of personality. Just like in the Hitman games, the NPCs also have some really in-depth conversations and arguments with each other too, and this helps to bring a huge amount of energy, life and world building to the game. Plus it also gives you a lot of fun stuff to listen to while you're on a killing spree. It's cool. nope, you're ready to and that's me done! Hopefully this video has helped you understand the premise and gameplay of Deathloop a little bit better now. I know it has for me, and now I'm even more excited to get my hands on it in September. If you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a like, subscribe to Eurogamer for daily videos about video games, and if you fancy sticking with us for a bit, why not check out one of these other videos that are on screen and clickable right now. Or alternatively, you could just click that replay button on the player there, and you'll see that my intro to this video now makes way more sense than it did the first time around. Goodbye and see you next cycle.